I'm going to show you five favorite ways, my favorite ways, to do genealogy research in 2020 on a totally free website called FamilySearch.org. I'm sure you're already familiar with it, but this is my method when we come back. Welcome back. I want to show you my favorite ways to do research using the free website uh, FamilySearch.org but I also want to show you how I use them in connection with each other uh, to kind of maximize your research uh, efforts there. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox, a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Now my goal is to make every video worthy of your time, so make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Also, don't forget that Genealogy TV has a Facebook page, a newsletter, and a website at genealogytv.org. Make sure you're signed up with all of those. Now, let's jump over to the computer and let me show you how I use these five places on Family Search and how you can use them to help maximize your efforts. Okay, so here we are at Family Search, but one of the things that I want to uh, recommend whether you are using Family Search as your primary or Ancestry as your primary or MyHeritage or wherever, I recommend that you really focus on having your primary tree in one place. I know a lot of people like to have 15 different trees on 15 different services and they're constantly having to spend a lot of time updating those trees every time they come up with something new. To me, that's a lot of work. I can't work that way. So I have one primary tree. I use Ancestry, but I use Family Search a lot. And I do try and keep some of this information updated on Family Search. Um, but because that is a public tree and anybody can modify it, I'm not as focused on using Family Search as my primary as I am Ancestry, and I also use Family Tree Maker. In combination but I really keep my primary tree over there because I can lock that down and I know that the research that is on that tree on Ancestry is my work and nobody else's and so I can analyze each piece of data as I bring it in and I know it's right however family search has a lot of records and tools that you can't find anywhere else so um, I use this as a tool and a huge research aid. So having said that, we're going to jump into those five steps here right now. Okay, so here we are on the tree. And I just absolutely love the family search tree. So this is number one, is the, is the tree itself. And as you can see, I'm just using um, one of my ancestors. And you can see that the, the lines, the colors here are for the different lines of the family, right? But what you can also do, if you haven't noticed, is you can also change the colors by birth country, by the number of sources that they have. Look up here. This one says, if you look at the dark gold, it's 10 plus sources of data for each of those persons, those ancestors, but some of these others don't have as much. And it might be, just, it could be that just somebody hasn't done the work on family search and um, put those resources in. You can also look at stories. You can see where there are photographs. Research helps is what it says over here. Um, it's showing you where data problems are, where record hints are located. Um, so maybe you want to focus on the blue boxes there and research suggestions love that okay so let's go back up to the family lines for a moment one of the things i want to point out if you're not familiar with family search is if you hover over somebody you get this little fan chart and by the way i'm on the fan chart you can change that up here we'll go into that here in just a second but if you click on this little fan chart it puts him in the center and now you're looking at one more generation out. You have the ability of looking at multiple generations across the top. You can change this. If you don't want to look at the fan chart, you can look at 
a landscape view, which is perhaps something that you're more comfortable with looking at. You can look at the portrait view, which is basically the same ancestral chart. It's just turned around differently so that you can uh, move up the tree this way, going back in time. And uh, the descendancy chart is going the other direction, showing you the descendants of each person. I don't use this as much, personally. It's a nice layout, though. But um, I really love the fan chart. Um, it is, uh, to me, one of the more unique charts as far as being able to uh, see the color coding. I just, I really do like this chart a lot. Uh, so with tabs across the top, I can leave this open as my map, if you will, as to where to go back as I'm researching, because I, I want to be very methodical in how I'm doing it. So I will pick one person and I will focus on one person until I'm done researching that person. So keeping that focus person in mind, the person that I'm really seeking, um, that I'm missing information or whatever, I'm trying to dig for more information about one person or maybe a cluster family, husband and wife and children kind of research question, I'm now going to go over to the records and drill in. I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to do a search by name, but I'm also going to do a search by location. Okay. So if we go and uh, research Melissa Smith, and I believe she was born in Wayne, West Virginia, and I believe she was born in about 1827, and I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to do a search. From here, I have a ton of information, and I can start researching it. And if you're not familiar with Family Search, make sure you get familiar with it. Not only will I look at the records here, now there's 8,290 records to filter through. A lot of times I will look over at the collections first because if I'm specifically looking for something, then I can find it faster typically in the categories list instead of going through all of these records. Now, in some cases here, you can see that we've got a little icon that this person's attached to a tree. This shows that there is a record there, and this shows that there is an image with that record. Now, jumping back to the record search uh, homepage, I will do the same research again, but this time I will search by location. So if I'm going to West Virginia, I will start digging in and finding out what records are available. And by doing that, I can scroll down and see what kind of records are available. Okay, so the number three thing that I will do as part of my process for using Family Search is, again, I still have that one person I'm looking for, but I will also go and search here from the home page. I will go and search the Family Search Wiki. Oh my gosh, if you're not familiar with the Family Search Wiki, you should be. Again, you can research by location. And you can learn about all of the records and all of the details that you are looking for in the area in which you're researching. For example, we were looking at West Virginia. So let's go ahead and look at West Virginia. I, if you notice, I keep drilling down through the map because it's easy and it's very visual and it also helps give me uh, some clues. Now I know that she was from Wayne County, West Virginia. So I'm going to click on Wayne County and I'm going to keep drilling in. And now I'm getting information about the location of my ancestor. And this is something you really should be doing on every search. This allows you to understand the border changes for the county. It under gives you an idea where the courthouse is. It gives you all kinds of information. Uh, definitely dig into the Family Search Wiki for the locations that you are searching. Again, I'm still focused on this one person, so I want to learn a lot about what's going on in Wayne County, West Virginia. So the fourth thing I do as part of my process 
uh, when working on family search is to set some watches and, and pay attention to the list and how you can do that. Now here we've been, I've been kind of working with Melissa Smith. You can do that here and you can actually set the watch right here. But if we also drill into her profile, let me jump over there. We can also set that watch from here. And so we can do that. You can also click over back over to the tree here, or you can view your relationship from here, which is rather cool. So using the watch, now I can go over to lists and I can review all of the people that I am watching uh, to see if anything has changed. And there's Melissa Smith. She's actually in here twice. Now, why is that? That is because um, somewhere along the way, there were two uh, persons, two profiles in Family Search that were really the same person. So somebody must have merged them. It may have been me years ago. I didn't do it recently, but this person was deleted and it was somebody I was watching at one time. So um, these two people, as you can see, um, were probably merged into one person. So that is the watch list. So make sure you're watching the people that you are researching and uh, that you're checking the list once in a while. As you can see here at Family Search, uh, probably their algorithms had created this person some time ago and then somebody came along and modified it, uh, corrected it, or updated it. As a collaborative tree, anybody can update those profiles. So as those changes occur, you'll get notifications of it. Uh, the fifth thing I like to do is uh, research from the catalog. You can do that just by uh, clicking on the catalog and then you can search by place, surname, title, author, subject, and keywords. This is a great opportunity. If you've got something obscure that you want to see if there's any records here for um, social clubs, um, see maybe there's a registry for an old rotary club. Maybe there is... Um, you know, they like to use this flying tigers, you know, example a lot on Ancestry. Um, but if you want a subject by keywords, you can. I use this a lot for, again, searching by location or um, subjects. For example, Civil War records. Uh, and maybe you want to get really specific about what kind of records you're looking for. So the catalog is a great thing, but one of the things that I want to point out is these other catalogs. This is kind of a bonus tip. WorldCat is another repository, and it really, I believe, stands for uh, the Online Computer Library Center is what OCLC stands for, but it's also known as WorldCat, and it is the world catalog of a lot of libraries out there and repositories as to what you could find. So if you're looking for manuscripts, genealogies, extra um, books maybe written about locations, make sure that you're digging into WorldCat as well and Archive Grid, as you can see here. Let's jump over to OCLC for a second. Here is WorldCat. You can uh, log in and do some research and find what libraries in your area or where some of these manuscripts are that you just got to see. And uh, this will help tell you. Also, Archive Grid is a fabulous um, online repository. Again, for really great for taking a look at uh, libraries and archives in the areas in which you're wanting to research. So there's kind of a bonus tip. You can actually get to those from the catalog at Family Search. Hey, well, that's my five top tips five top tips for using familysearch.org as a research tool. That's kind of my methodology. Those are the things that I walk through every time I kind of have a research question in my mind. This is how I'm going to uh, methodically go through family search to try and glean everything out of it that I can for that research question. And then I do it all again for the next research question. So uh, if you have a method that you like, uh, please uh, put a brief comment in the comment sections below. Everybody learns from everyone else. And well, I hope you like that. If so, give me a thumbs up and we will catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time we upload a video. Don't forget to check out the Facebook page and the website at genealogytv.org. 
And until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.